tock, tick, tock, ticking time bomb, tock, tock. I had to, um, first time venture into the world of TikTok, and I cannot believe what I saw. I just can't believe it. And, um, because Facebook is this very controlling form format that they, if you don't say what they like, they just simply ban you. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And I, and I know that uh, Rabbi Green, Michal Green, experiences this in a very powerful way. He gets banned completely. He can't even log in. <laughs> um, so TikTok I, I might be a more open platform. And it's and I put the stupidest nothing introduction video and it, and it and it got and I have ten followers and somehow got 125 viewings. Which in, in Facebook I've I've been an outcast. I'm in the gulags of Facebook. <laughs> so I mean I just it's just hard to keep up with with the uh, technology and everything. And who has time for, for trying to figure it out? But I couldn't believe my eyes. Welcome. I could not believe my eyes when I saw this ticking time bomb of, of TikTok. What, what I mean to say in particular is how our attention is drawn to the most superficial thing you could possibly do, worse than any YouTube you could possibly imagine if you're also new to this, as I am. But I think this helps me understand what the heck is it talking about when it says they worship the golden calf? They just saw God and then they denied it? It's hard to understand, but when if you go to TikTok and you see how superficial we've become, you can understand what world religion emerged from at that time. And I think we're gonna learn that from the Malbim. He, he explains this in gorgeous words as usual. I mean, this is what I was intended to find, but I got my yesterday's class out of um, the previous verse um, leading up to this. It's the, the, the idea of giving the, the uh, second tablets, or the first tablets, rather. And he spoke about that, how, the, how that works. It materialized in the, in the atmosphere. It would have taken uh, many, many years, but it happened in a, in a moment before their eyes. And um, that becomes this, like the space that's beyond space that exists within the, the Ark, the Raiders of the Lost Ark, they, that's what they were looking for. They only found the, the crumpled up version <laughs> somehow. Um, anything that Moshe made is eternal. There's, there's still a hiding in the Vatican somewhere, literally. It, it, there's stories of people visiting the Vatican and, and seeing the Monero there. And uh, I don't know if they live to tell the tale because you can't see these things and, and or some, some legend like that. But Yarha Amki Baishas Maisha, Malbin quotes, the nation saw that Maisha, let's read you the, their version. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, the people gathered against Aaron and said to him, come, make us a God who shall go before us? For that fellow, Moses, the man who brought us out from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has happened to him. That's the verse. The ancient sages spent a lot of time on this. To explain how could this be for the Jewish people? This hor horrible... Um, desecration of everything that was holy. Asher hayu shimtza bekameham. They were. It was a disaster for a reputation uh, fixing fixing up their their profile. The asher gambi. And if you look into the story and see that all that God had done for them, all the deeds, Asher Asalei before their eyes, and they afterwards heard the voice of the living God, 
Elikim Chai Medaber Metaycha Eish, speaking from the fire that we spoke about yesterday at length. Leisasa Lechol Pesel, you should not make a graven image, but Kol Tmuno depict any form. TikTok is this depiction of form. It's about form over any purpose whatsoever. If Snoop Dogg went, went on there and started talking about rolling a, a joint, that would have been like a rabbi's sermon next to what's on there. I am astonished by the popularity of it and the absolute vacuousness of, of anything of meaning. So, um, I think that's what the, um, Chata Egel was. In that world, it's not meaning, meaningless. If you're a, a makeup person and, and that's your whole life, then that, that's probably, it's good to see what the trends are in, in that area. So the, that is analogous to what they did with the, um, golden calf. They gave form to something that was meant to transcend form in a, in a sense. Let, let's see what, how he interprets it. So they had just heard the idea of don't make a graven image or a form. Don't depict anything. Don't focus on the, the form of something and just be mesmerized by it. A world where that's as far as you go, the surface. You, you're not supposed to take the infinite and give it a, a form and say, that's all I'm going to think about. And, and, and it's become something that's, that's form without content. Hashchisu is ivu ma'alehem. They, they made themselves disgusting but by doing that, by making a graven image and they made this idol. V'yishtachavu l'tavni sher, eichel esav, and they bowed to the form of an ox. The golden calf was an ox eating grass. He, he moved through witchcraft that would they threw the, the magic coin into the thing and it started, um, became animated. The coin that Moshe made to get Yasef's bones out of the Nile magically and someone got, the, got it. And Micha, I think, got his hands on it somehow. I don't know how that, that chapter happened. But then they use it as witchcraft to animate this golden form of an ox or a calf that ate grass. Kuzari, and the interpretation is since the whole world, all the people in the world were idolatrous at the time, and they served forms. Forms represented a certain ideal, and that's what they worshipped. The Gam Yisrael, but say some of Mitzrayim. Even the Jewish people, when they came out from Egypt, Halach Hashem Lifneihem. This is fascinating. Hashem appeared before them, the Amud Eish, in a pillar of fire. The Inyan, the Anan, in a cloud. The Hayu Mishtach Vim Nachay Lelokim, and they faced this and bowed down to it. Welcome. The Jewish people had the form of two pillars, one of fire, one of cloud, and they bowed down to those images in the desert. They were images, they were actual things. They weren't depictions of anything except the, the miracle of God. So that's called Nachachai Lelokim, before the presence of God in these miracles, in the form of pillars of fire and cloud. So even the Jewish people had this idea that there was some direction and some form given to you, your service. Your body takes up space. How do you de de depict devotion to the one God? There's these, these pillars that they bowed to. And that was the bowing to God. The Kasher Allah Meishe Lahar. And when Moses went up the mountain, Hiftichem Lahav Miluchai Savanim. He promised them to bring back these beautiful sapphire-like, godly-made condensed atmosphere called tablets, habris, and to make this ark to contain it, the ark of the covenant, shisham yashkin hashem shchinasa that that's where God's going to put His glory, 
among you. So you exist in space on earth and here's a golden ark or a box that's ornate and, and, and carries these, these um, stone translucent cubes that were engraved with God's finger. So you could read it every way at once. And it had this, the code in the Hebrew form engraved on it, saying the Ten Commandments on it. That became the place where God's presence was manifest and it, the focal point of, of what does it look like? Where do you bow to? How do you represent bowing down to, to infinity? You have infinity compressed in these two cubes. And it, I guess it's analogous to the, the fire and the, the cloud, the two pillars. or the two Kruving, the cherubs. We'll see that that also comes into play. Why did they take one image of one thing and bow down to that, this golden calf? So even amongst the Jewish people, God gave them some dimensions and space that that's the intended place to express your belief in monotheism. Monotheism, the demands that you put um, the images of creatures inside the Holy of Holies. It had these curtains that, that were ornate and had pictures of the, uh, I think, Kruvim on them, cherubs or eagles or something. Um, so the idea of depicting godly forms is allowed in a very restricted condition that is determined by by Terah, God's rule on this world. And it's, it's determined that there will be a space that you have to bow down to. That will be the one that is God's signature for expressing monotheism. You have to depict it somehow in space. So you make these two cubes. That becomes the the um, the logo, the branding of, of God. He, it's his sort of arbitrary deter determination that this becomes the, the good purpose and path in life. And that becomes the ideal that's meant to shine and be represented in the world by by putting this thing and that's where everyone bows to. So I'm trying to explain how you could have the sin of the golden calf. How is it possible? How could we have TikTok in it and forget everything about any meaning whatsoever? I mean, look at that, what happened in the beginning of last cent millennium or the last century, the last millennium. People had huge wars because they had, they believed in something. <laughs> now we don't believe in anything except cosmetics. I think that's the golden calf. I think that's what we're getting to, but we'll see. This is a very spiritual um, explanation of it. Vehem yakbilu negdei. Oh no, my my car went off. Here we go. Vehem yikab yakbilu negdei lelokim, and they receive before it towards God. Bevodasim in their service lelokim in toward in God. So, welcome, Miriam. So we bow down to a certain space. The space contains a thing that has a certain shape, a certain signature of God in, in these two cubes, in, in this beautiful ark. That's the way we're supposed to serve God in this world. The Kasha Baishas Maisha, but when Maisha was tarrying on the, the mountain, or so they thought, or they were anxious for him to return, lovely, the Lakachi Mai Tzida Lachashu Ki and they thought he was gone. What? They they didn't feel his presence anymore, and they had to to figure something out. They were they just got too anxious. He skabsu hahamayin. The mass is gathered. Maham levakesh tzurum muchashes. They wanted a form that has some shape. They didn't have the tablets yet, right? This is before the giving of the Torah. No, this was after the. No, this is the Luchais were given on Shvois. Um, 
the Chet Egel was um, 40 days later. I'm getting so confused right now. Anyways, they, they wanted to have some kind of form to, to bow down to. They didn't have the, the tablets yet. As we to, today goes on in heaven. And everything that goes on in heaven is not determined by man's volition. This is a, a, um, a system that God animates himself. without its own nature apart from God's will expressed through this whole um, system of angels and the spiritual mechanics and ducts. <laughs> Did you ever see the movie Brazil? I went with my school and it was bizarre. It's, it's hauntingly bizarre, that movie. As we say in heaven, that God has a place where he sits on a throne. There's some depiction of glory that happens in a certain place where everyone can dance around and say, there's going to be this machel, this circle dance where everyone's pointing to the center. I spoke about this a couple of years ago. So God rests in heaven and that's the place of his throne. They didn't forget all that from their the awesome experience in Egypt. And just were embittered by certain mitzvahs. The Kokach Kings of I think it's the Bartanura. Kum Aselanu Elokim who covered Chayne Betsuras Gvia. Let come, it says, let's make for us Elokim, which is his glory that resides in a certain form. Kamoi Viyisa Malach Elokim, as it says that the angel of God journeyed, Hailech Lifne Machna Yisrael, that passed before the camp of the Jewish people. And the sages in this Medrash Tanhuma said, They saw the chariot. So, I think this is talking about leading up to the, to the Mount Sinai, or maybe at the actual giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai, that they saw the Merkava, but they focused on one aspect of this Merkava. They took the ox. That's what they made the golden calf of. So the ox is somehow the TikTok problem of giving form to something and 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 uh, snipping out the rest. Everything else is cut out, and you just focus on one thing and say that becomes your golden calf. So they took out the, this calf from this four-headed beast that's called God's chariot, the 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 holy beasts. Okay, they're they're um. It has a face of a lion on the right, a face of a man in the center, and to the left is the is the ox, and the back is an eagle. The Asitsurasa, it's like the 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 king kings of each of the the different level. You have the human represent represented, you have the mammal, um or not no, not a mammal, but the king of the, the jungle, and you have the king of the domesticated the domesticatable animals, the ox, and then you have an eagle in the back. Why a trafe animal, I don't, a bird, I don't know. Um, so they took one of, of those things and that became their golden calf. The kind of vanasam. In other words, they saw this thing. It, it, it wasn't like saying, I want to connect to God with something that's completely foreign that I made up completely. For some reason, they dissected the thing and they decided to depict it. Perhaps if you, if they had a foreheaded thing, it's not it wouldn't it wouldn't have uh, also been allowed at all. But for some reason, their sin and it was supposed to be the most heinous of all idolatrous um, sins was focusing on the aspect of the ox, the share. The kavanasim ki hisbaretz libaferish. I've explained this in another place, I suppose. 
I've interpreted the whole thing. Maiser Markava Sheyechazko, this is the Malbim I'm, I'm learning with you. Maiser Markava Sheyechazko Ra'a, the whole story of the vision of Ezekiel and the chariot, Ra'a bin Markava Rishena, to Rishere Mehasmao. They saw in the in this time when they came out from Egypt, and it was in the form, they saw this ox on the left side, the sher, this bull. Umerkava Ashnia, Ratmur Suras Kruv. And on the second chariot, they saw the form of a cherub. Okay? So that we actually ended up putting as part of the old um, furniture in the base of Megdash in the Holy Ark. It has the form of two cherubs. Ubiarti Sham, Ki Raz Chachayas Nese Merkava. And I explained there, says the, the Malbim, that Ezekiel saw the beasts, Chayas, these, these divine animals. Naysay Merkava, who carry this chariot upon which rests the throne. So there's all, all this depiction in heaven, even, of these heavenly things, but they're intended to express meaning as they exist in a higher frequency. So there are these beasts that carry God's chariot, that sometimes they walk with their legs. And sometimes they fly with their wings. And we spoke about wings at some length. So the Afanim, I said it, it's Afanim, a different type of angel, that they move in a certain way, and that's called their Halicha, their, their journey. And that's when they're called beasts. Just like a beast have no volition in determination of its life, it can like be different. You can't make itself a black sheep. But but they have a nature that and an instinct. Rachas lefi chukas shemayim. So too, nature has heavenly laws, but loy bechira vechavshis that just have a nature to act a certain way. God wanted some divine forces that have a lot of power and um, broad reach that have no free choice. It's just an expression of divine will at different frequencies. Ava baesia. But at the time he conducted the Afanim, so God gave a nature to, to uh, a whole world of, of spiritual entities, and at times he takes charge of it when it, otherwise he just gave it a certain nature to do a certain thing and he and when, a miracle is when they go against their nature and they're brought higher so at the time of conducting these angels in a way that transcends their nature according to divine providence and miracles according to the reward and the, the deed, I suppose, of the people that w- merit these angels at their side. Then they are exalted above and the angels go up with it. That's called flying. So when God says, oh, there's a lot of merit in the world and therefore he channels godliness of ultimately ending into the world, but going through the whole channels of the spiritual realm to get there. That's just the way God made the energy, the infinite energy pass through until it becomes something that's tangible. Even in physics, there's different levels of what's, what's tangible and what's not. But the, these angels are said to fly in this way. So there's merit, so God causes them to extend beyond their nature and and then they're flying you would think that god gave them wings isn't it part of their nature i guess it's those wings are sort of uh, animated when 
when there's this direction of, of divine um, attention or, or grace. And then people see in their actions that they have their under God's or angelic's wings. They're under the wings of angels. Because then they are able to have an impact with volition and choice. They could feel that they're empowered in the world. As a person now chooses according to his own volition and, and mind. That's when they're called cherubs. Angels are called cherubs in the sense when So they were worshipping a golden calf because on the left side there's the, there was this sher, this ox, on the, the vision of the heavenly uh, chariot. But there was actually the face of a man on this chaya, this chaya zakedesh, these this holy chariot. Also, and that, and when that's separated out, on it's called a cherub. So they had wings to fly with, to be exalted from above the earth. <coughs> and then we there we explain that in the time of their flight, these holy beasts with their wings, shahu that at that time that they are animated miraculously, which means beyond their nature, and providence that's above nature. So in other words, God set up a system, so it's his rules. But when, he wa- but when the creator wants to direct his attention to something, he, there's this extra um, ex- enhancement beyond nature. In this, in the in the world of angels, so they're compelled to create a certain environment that leads to miracles, presumably also in the world as well. They draw their this divine energy that comes from above the world, shahu ilam hakise that comes from this world of the throne. So God is a king. He has a throne in the sense that he gives a source for energy to come out to all the, the world. So the certain angels are different frequencies that are involved with different things like healing, etc. May Akiba Gershon ben Rachel Basia ben Fuushleim and Davin ben Masidi. So there's this ability for God to direct energy through this, that's, and it comes through the form of a throne. Remember, we're trying to understand what they did wrong in their idolatry. And we said that even in our experience, in our Torah, there's depictions of this giving form to a divine thing. Um, something that becomes a focal point when, when we bow down. There's, we re- there's a reason why we, we, we bow down to the East. So, in other words, you're going to have to bow somewhere. How are you going to represent monotheism in the world? And this is the description of, and what and to understand what exactly their, their sin was of worshipping this golden TikTok calf. So it all comes from this throne, and it, then it extends out to the at different dimensions. Then their wings are said to be up to to take on this divine energy. Derech Harakia that comes from the whole spiritual system called the firmament, the Rakia, Sha'al Rashayachayas, which extends out beyond their heads of these beasts. Min Um it comes from the world of the throne. Shira'u Yechazkal, that Ezekiel saw Kemara Evan Sapir, like the envision of a translucent sapphire stone, Demus Kise, in the form of a throne. 
וכבר ביארנו בפרשס משפטים שהיה הבדל בהשגה. There's a difference in the way this is understood. Be'es alu azkenim lahar im Meisha. At the time when the elders ascended the, the mountain with Meisha. Be'en azkenim be'en yeser atzil b'nei Yisrael. Between the elders and all the rest of the um, preeminent amongst the Jewish people. Shazkenim ra'u es alukei Yisrael. That the elders saw the God of the Jewish people. Thank you. Vahainu, hainu, shehasigu es han haga sheman hig mitzad shehu elokei Yisrael. Meaning that they understood the conduct that his oversight extends, being that he is the God of the Jewish people. Sheman hig bedera kashkacha nisis, who conducts their adventures with divine providence. So God is overseeing every single detail of the Jew's life in order to make it something that has purpose in the whole plot of creation, which is very simple. You have a world, it gets chaotic because of idolatry. You have um, someone that represents um, goodness and direction to the idea that there's one God and everyone's meant to get along and, and integrate. And... Um, that ideology is intended to be enhanced and see um, persist throughout the generations miraculously with o- the oversight and um, the accommodating the continuity of that ideology. So our bloodline is blessed because the, our purpose is passed on from generation to generation and it's most mo, it's most seen as an authentic source when it comes from someone that actually descended from Abraham so so our our there is this familial aspect that's in, inherent to Judaism so the uh, god oversees the the world to accommodate his ideology the Torah. van haga zunem shakas ma'il makise and this oversight is said to come from the world of the throne. So there's this form in the sapphire th- throne that's the um, source for all the energy that comes into the world. According to the laws of karma. Benevolence and punishment. That's why it says that at the giving of the, of the Torah, they saw beneath his feet, I think it's talking about the feet of the throne that they saw, the act, the maisa, the, um, the image of a sapphire um, st- like brick. So they saw this, this chariot as it's coming from the world of the throne. They saw through, it's, it goes, it gets deeper from the, the, the world of the throne. It says to carry, the beasts carry the throne, but the throne is above it. So, and then there's the Adam that sits on the throne. There's a, there's a form of a man that sits on the throne. That's what goes on in heaven. So the, the king, the image, the, 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 the idea of the, the, the Adam Ha'elyon, the supernal man that, that, that assumes this throne, is um, the source for the throne to give out to the rest of the world. It goes through the angels. And Kamesh Yeshaya, as Isaiah saw, Srafim Aimdi Mamalai, that there are angels that stand above him. But not everyone experienced the same thing. They couldn't appreciate that that dimension. So the elders had one thing. Everyone experienced it different. And but they saw God, They saw the general direction of God in the world, not how God sends energy through this whole system of angels and the wings and the whole thing we've been talking about. That's when you say just 
the word Elohim as opposed to, I think, Elokei Yisrael that we referred to before. So this, if you have like the recognize God as Elokei Yisrael, you see how God gives you divine particular providence. God's taking care of every aspect of your life in, for you to have a place where you can um, do something too. So whether you see Elokei Yisrael or as Halokim, that he's not, he just has general control over things. You don't appreciate how every single detail is manifest through this whole system. Therefore you have Aaron and you have the elders. They saw the, this, these beasts in the form of cherubs. So each one had a different experience at Mount Sinai, apparently. But they had the, it was the same thing, but at different, different levels, they saw more. So Aaron and the, and the Zikanim, the elders, saw these chayas, these divinely inspired creatures in the form of kruvim, cherubs. Shetsura zu yashla be'es hafifa. That this is the form it takes when they're flying. She and haga hanisis, which is when there's miraculous um, conduct. So, so the angels have a certain nature to them, they have a certain function, and when God wants to direct the individual factors of the world, he uses the system of proving flying. These cherubs with wings that, that fly, thank you, and denoting or indicating miraculous conduct, direct um, direction from the, the world of the throne, this sort of central authority. And beneath the face of the ox, they saw the face of a cherub. But the, the next level of preeminent Jews, who had a lesser experience of that, they saw the face of the ox. They had a different angle they had different seats for the spectacle, and they saw different at different levels. This one saw the face of an ox. No. The fact is that it was rightful that they they had some form that came from this merkama on this, from this chariot, that God's glory rested upon. But he was destined to bring out the form of cherubs, who's beneath their wings. Remember, this is the form of the ark, these cherubs that their, their wings are uplifted, and beneath their wings, God's glory rests in the Holy of Holies. So that was something that hadn't happened yet. God was going to build a Mishkan for him the next year, a sanctuary where God's presence was going to be permanently placed in the world before they had these sort of, um, they had these pillars that they would be the place where they would recognize God's presence as most manifest. So they would bow down to that as a re representation of monotheism, not as, a, of course, idolatry. Um, and after the, um, well, the intention was that there should be such a form in the world, and it would have this idea of these cherubs whose wings ascend, and beneath that is where God, God rests, Bekaitish Gadashim. The Hashem is here, but God warns them, don't make with me gods of silver, who are just explained in the Mechilta, that this is a prohibition to make these cherubs out of silver, it should be specifically gold. That that Moshe had already told the Jewish people, 
that they knew that they were going to make some form made out of gold upon which God's glory would rest. So it's not like we don't need a focal point to say, I'm a body, a person in this world of certain dimensions, and if I'm going to direct them somewhere, how am I going to represent them in this world? So God does understand that and gives us a place where God's monotheism and his symptom that he's the one that's conducting this whole um, reduction of spirituality to a physical world, in the world that we live in, in his signature. But the elders understood according to their understanding, they knew the truth, that there will be, the, the gold would be fashioned in the form of Kruvim. They had a higher appreciation of it. They were quick, too quick to the, what's the expression? Too quick to the, they were too quick to say that it should be the ox that they saw because they didn't, have an experience that took them to the higher dimension where it's about cherubs and that would be the ultimate depiction of where this intended form would be decided and canonized as the the proper way to express god's monotheism in the world that this indicates this higher level of providence the, the, the level of Kruvim is that God cares for you like he would for a child. So you have these two faces facing each other. So it's like this personal, divine, particular province as opposed to just a general, God made the world, the world of nature and there's general laws that karma gets back to you. But there's this miraculous conduct that's at the level of Kruvim that they didn't even see, let alone um, opted could have the chance of opting for that. They didn't see that. They thought that God was supposed to be depicted as, as from the world of the ox. What does the ox represent? I'm suggesting TikTok. <speaking in Hebrew> that God has these miraculous wonders that he directs the, the people that follow his this specific thing. There's going to be a form that's going to represent the unity of all the, the source and fountain, fountain and the, the true throne of all existence is going to take a form. Everyone knew that. Everything was dependent upon TikTok, physical um, shape. The, the, the worship of shape is going to somehow be manifest because that's just the, the nature of man. You're going to need a place to bow down to. Is it going to be this Egyptian makeup magazine thing? Or is it going to be something that has a Jewish flavor and and the Jewish flavor is simply something that God decided at a certain point it's going to be determined that you're going to worship exactly this way forevermore. They saw the world of the ox. They didn't get the idea that there's going to be a high level of conduct. There's not just going to be this appreciation of your life that's at the level of a general karmic system, but this world where everything is intimate, that that every step you take is God um, directing the, the atoms in the right place for you. That's the Kruvim that the elders perceived, and that was going to be the plan, they just jumped the gun. But if they had depicted this in the form of cherubs that were raising their arms up to the to, an, to where the iron abris would sit, la ya that wouldn't have been a sin. Rak It's just that they preempted. Remember, we spoke about yesterday. This is also the Malbim. How this there is this knowledge when you're speaking at the same time when Maisha was speaking at the same time as Hashem. They they, they didn't have, God didn't have to teach him. He just would say it because he embodied God, godly wisdom, as we said at length. So the same idea here. They, they had anticipated, they had this intuition that God is going to be represented in this world, that you, if you bow down to that, that represents not idolatry, but monotheism in the purest and most holy sense. They had saw too low, so they did it the wrong form. They, they didn't appreciate that there's a higher intimacy with, with the Jew. 
that they didn't see because they weren't sophisticated enough spiritually to reach that thing. They had to trust the elders. That they, they put this ark that was made out of the gold, that made the form of the Kruvim, in it they put these tablets that we spoke about at length yesterday of the covenant of the covenant upon which these angels would spread out their wings and the masses who did this in the in the form of an ox the level that they had worshipped is the conduct that applies to any nation any nation runs under a system of karma that affects if you're good, God will make it. But it's not in a way that there's a particular divine attention. That divine attention was selected to be with a certain family that an ideology that opened up to converts. And in fact, they pursued converts in that time, in the time of Abraham. He did pursue converts at that time. It's only after the giving of the terror that you're not allowed to pursue converts anymore because it's already like there's a whole process already established. It's supposed to be seen in their desire. You're not supposed to um, push push it on other people to take on more restrictions. God intended p- people to have less restrictions because their purpose is not as demanding. But the level of of a Jew is intended to be expressed through the images of two Kruvim in this loving um, gaze and embrace, rather. Well, both. So they apply to themselves something that was not true, that they only have conduct at the level of the ox when they didn't reach the level of the Kruvim, the human face, not the ox face, which is the left side the human face which was in the middle of this of this sort of divine creature that they that they saw carrying this throne on, on Mount Sinai but you could find merit in their error and say that it it was not so heinous and that they had this faulty rationale Bear. And with this, we'll come to the explanation. And it goes on and on. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish it this morning because I feel it's Arab Shabbos and maybe we can continue this with the, for the, um, for bringing. That's, uh, sort of my Nader custom these days. It's such a, it's my ultimate delight to be able to forbring before Shabbos when the time you're usually frantically running around. If you could be organized enough to, um, sit down and just, learn something and be inspired when Shabbos comes in. I think it makes it all the better Shabbos. Have a great day. I hope to see you later.